San Diego labor groups just issued a report card on the voting records of San Diego City Council members. The council members were graded on more than two dozen issues relevant to working families. Joining me to talk about the Working Families Report Card is Lorena Gonzalez, the CEO of San Diego and Imperial County's Labor Council. Lorena, welcome. Thank you. So this was a little surprising to me. The highest grade on the report card was a B but most of the city council members failed. Yes. How come? Well, you're right, Marty Emerald had the highest score with an 87%, which is a solid B, but um, far too many failed. We had five Fs, a, a D minus by Todd Gloria, um, and then David Alvarez also got a B. I, I think it's because we've seen a series of votes over the last two years that really do favor downtown corporate lobbyists, hotel interest, developers, over the needs of, of their neighborhoods and working families. And I think that that's unfortunate. Um, it's good and important that we, we focus on economic and, and growth, economic growth in general in San Diego, but not at the expense of the workers. And I think that that's what we've been seeing. Well, the report card had some unusual, uh, we could take a look at it sure. as far as what kinds of issues were being addressed on the report card. So how do some of these issues uh, actually impact a, a worker? It's, it's up on the screen now. Advocacy for transit, all right, we can see that. Affordable housing, public safety cuts. H how do these things actually address workers' issues? Well, you know, the 24 votes that they were actually scored on are the 24 votes that the Labor Council, the only organization in San Diego that works on behalf of workers' union and non-union to advocate for pro-worker policies, uh, lobbied on or, or brought worker advoc advocates to lobby on. And so we used the exact votes that we had actually talked to these council members about, both publicly and in, in private meetings. And so um, that, that was a list of 24. And we think that they are all worker-related. I know people have asked about pension reform. How is that worker related? Well, it's very directly related to the new hires at the city. As workers come in, they're going to be hired on without even um, necessarily the safety net of Social Security. That affects not only that worker, but if we see that spread, this idea that retirement security is now this thing of the past, that we're going to start having a retirement program that's based completely on Wall Street and the whims of Wall Street, without even the basic safety net of Social Security, that affects every worker in the private sector as well. And I think it's a concern for everybody. So of the 24, what is your, I, I guess, Aside from or including the 24, what is your overall assessment of how well working families are doing here in San Diego right now? Well, you know, we have obviously unemployment issues, but even a bigger issue is underemployment. We have people in our neighborhoods who are working two, sometimes three jobs and still can't meet ends meet. And that is a culture of San Diego that has gone on for far too long. And while we're looking at economic growth, we're looking at the tourism industry. So we have a billion dollar tax hike. And a lot of the votes on, on the scorecard were related to the convention center expansion. A billion dollar tax hike that these that a vast majority of these council members voted for and, and placed upon uh, people who are going to travel to San Diego, but then let the hotel industry decide how to spend that without any protections for the type of jobs that are going to be created, how much those jobs are going to have to be subsidized by public agencies like food stamps and, and low-income housing. Um, no, no discussion about that. Just a giveaway to the hotel industry. It was very, very disappointing year. Well, let me ask you this. Does this report have any impact? I mean, what, what is the point of issuing this report? I mean, I, I'm sure you're hopeful it does, but does it really? Well, I'll tell you this. A number of those council members come before the Labor Council, before unions, and when they're running for office, they, they proclaim certain things. They're going to be for workers. They're going to be not only a good vote, but they're going to be an advocate for low-wage workers, for the middle class. And so I think we, we spend a lot of our time, probably too much time in labor, communicating that during an election, right? We, we spend time, we go and talk to voters, we talk to middle class voters, low wage voters, union voters, and say, this is what this council member says they're going to do. All we wanted to do is say, okay, did they actually do that? And if not, let's communicate that to the voters as well. So that's the timing of it. And you know, I gotta think if people, uh, and they do continue to come before us and make these proclamations, that when it gets out there, what they've actually performed, that that's gonna matter as well. Let me ask you very quickly, we only have about 20 seconds left. Uh, people may accuse unions of using this for a, a political reason and as being part of the partisan gridlock, how would you answer that as far as this report card and its uh, policies or its political agenda? Well, interestingly, you know, we're a nonpartisan group and we 
even before this new fad of becoming independent, have proclaimed the fact that we are not just going to support people because they're Democrats. That's been our um, position all along, but we've been very emphatic about that this year. There are two Democratic council members who are running for re-election that we're not supporting. One we're going to aggressively not support, Sherry Leitner in District 1, because it doesn't matter if somebody's a Democrat. What matters is, are they willing to stand up for workers? Are they willing to stand up for a middle class, for low-wage workers? And if they're not, we're not going to support them. It has nothing to do with partisanship. It has to do with economic policy and social justice. All right. Lorraine and Gonzalez, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you.